In today's lesson, we are going to look at 16 commonly confused words in English. If you confuse any of these words, it's not an indication of your level. Students from low levels all the way to high levels can struggle with these word pairs. At the end of this lesson, I have a test for you with 16 questions. Let me know how you did in the comments below. I really love getting your feedback. Did you get 16 correct out of 16? Maybe just mm, nine correct out of 16. Let me know. My name's Arnell. Let's start. Funny means ha ha ha. Fun means yay. Let me give you some more professional definitions. Funny means comical. Something makes you laugh. Funny is an adjective. Fun means enjoyable. You have a good time. Fun can be an adjective or a noun. Let's think about things that are funny, things that are fun. Funny. Jokes are funny. Comedies, comedy movies are funny. Some pictures can be funny. All of these things can make you laugh. What can be fun? Parties, parties are fun. Mm, playing games. Hobbies. Reading is fun. I enjoy reading. There were some funny parts in this book. I had a lot of fun at the basketball game last night. You can see in my last example, fun is a noun. Think about a few examples for yourself. What kind of things do you find funny? What kind of things do you find fun? To plus your destination, toward plus the direction you are moving. But first things first. Toward without the S is preferred in American English. Towards with the S is preferred in British English. Choose whichever one you want to use. I go to school every day. School is my destination. It's where I want to go. Abigail drives to work every morning. Her workplace is her destination. Mm. Gail jumped off the boat and swam to the shore. The shore was her destination. You can see two tells us exactly where we want to go. Toward. Let's say a couple wants to have a picnic. Where should we sit? Mm. Let's walk toward the trees and see if we can find a nice spot. Are the trees their destination? Do they want to see the trees? No, but that's the direction they want to walk in. A hurricane. A hurricane is coming toward us, toward our country, toward our city. Are we its destination? No, but it's coming in this direction. Excuse me, where's the restroom? Head toward gate G3 and the toilets will be on your left. Do I want to go to gate G3? Nope, but I need to move in that direction. With these two words, they can sometimes be used interchangeably. Can everyone please make their way to the fire exit? Can everyone please make their way toward the fire exit? You know, in this situation, it's very clear what the speaker means. Two, because a fire exit is the destination. But then again, toward, because we want everyone to go in that direction.
First things first, borrow is a regular verb. Borrow, borrowed, borrowed. Lend is irregular. Lend, lent, lent. Borrow means take. Lend means give. Now, are we taking and giving permanently or temporarily? Let's look at those two words just for a second. Temporary, temporarily. Permanent, permanently. We have the adjective and adverb forms. Temporary means short term. Permanent means forever. For example, tattoos. Tattoos are permanent. But tattoos for kids are temporary. They're really fun, right? They stay in your skin for a couple of days and then they're gone. So borrow and lend, we're taking and giving temporarily. Jake borrowed $100. Bill lent $100. Is Jake going to return the money? Eventually, yes. Here we have a library and people in the library. When it comes to books, which word do I need here? The library, hmm, books. People, hmm, books. Right, a library or the library lends books because they give books to people. People borrow books. With these two words, understanding the definitions is important, but so is the grammar. Let's take a look. You can borrow something from someone, you lend something to someone, or you lend someone something. I borrowed a sweater from my sister. We can borrow ping pong paddles from the front desk. A lot of time with borrow, from plus person isn't necessary. For example, can I borrow a pen? We don't need to say, can I borrow a pen from you? Common mistake. Can you borrow me a pen? We cannot borrow someone something. My sister borrowed me a sweater. No. Barry lent his car to Casey. Casey needed to go to Ikea to pick up some furniture. I lent my slow cooker to my best friend. Casey will return the car. My best friend will return my slow cooker. Let's change the grammar a little bit. Casey lent Barry his car. I lent my best friend my slow cooker. That's also perfectly fine. And there is no difference between the two lend forms. You can use them interchangeably. They're both fine. I want to give you one more example with lend. You're going to listen to one of Shakespeare's most famous lines. This is the first line of a speech by Mark Antony in the play Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. Lend me your ears means listen to me. This is very old fashioned, but this quote is culturally important. Okay, if you still find these words confusing, you can do a little test. You can replace borrow and lend with take or give, and your sentence will still make sense. Here we see a sign with some information. Elevator is out of order. Out of order means not working. So maybe on a coffee machine you might see out of order, or on a toilet, out of order, not working. A sign like this that gives you information is called a notice. A notice. I saw a notice 
in the window that said help wanted. A few notices on the board were advertising cleaning services. So we know notice is a noun, a notice. What's the verb form for this to give information? Is it notice? Notify. When we notify someone, we give them information. This is a formal verb, which you might see in work emails. Notice the verb means to make an observation. Let's compare. Sarah, the meeting at four has been canceled. Oh, are those new glasses? In the first example, I notified her of the cancellation. In the second example, I made an observation. I noticed her new glasses. So it's incorrect to say, I noticed my boss, I was sick. I notified my boss, I was sick. Winners of the competition were notified via email last week. I hope no one notices the typo I made on my Facebook post. And one last example, if I'm doing a YouTube live, you'll see a button that says notify me. If you push that button, it will give you information. It will tell you when my live starts. Click on it. Can you remember the first two words we compared in this lesson? Let me remind you with a picture. Right. The first two words were fun and funny. Remember means your mind can give you the information. Remind means something helps you remember. If you were thinking, yeah, what were the first two words? Well, my picture reminded you. Pictures can remind us. What other things can remind us? Mm -mm -mm. Post-its can remind us. Our phone can remind us. Our phone can notify us. People can remind us. All of these things can help you remember. Just like borrow and lend, the definitions of these words are important, but so is the grammar. Let's take a look. Okie dokie. I know there's a lot of information here, but we need to go through everything step by step. Grammar changes meaning. For example, there's a big difference between remember plus gerund and remember plus infinitive. If you're already confused, don't worry, I'll explain everything. Remember, your team lost the game. I remember. Remember plus noun or pronoun. Do you remember me? Of course I remember you. I remember all of my students. Remember plus gerund. A gerund is an ing word like running, swimming, playing, eating. These words look like verbs, but they function as nouns. I remember hearing a wolf howling in the middle of the night. Remember plus infinitive. An infinitive is to plus verb. To run, to swim, to play, to eat. Please remember to lock the front door when you leave for work. I have a lesson on gerunds versus infinitives on my channel if you'd like to learn more about this topic. There is an important difference between remember plus gerund and remember plus infinitive. A past memory, a future obligation. Do you remember playing with our dolls when we were kids? I remember seeing Aiden at the mall with Suzanne. Freddy says he doesn't remember falling asleep on the couch. These are all past memories. You have to remember to set your alarm. 
Remember to call me when you get home. If we don't remember to pay our rent, we'll be in trouble. These are things we need to do. We can't forget. Remember that subject verb. Remember that you need to arrive 15 minutes early. It's important to remember that we are short staffed this week, so fewer people are able to answer phones. And short staffed means not enough staff. Remember plus WH, question word. I don't remember who gave me this mug. Ask Bobby. He remembers where everything is. Let's move on to remind. You can see remind is always followed by a person. Your team lost the game. Don't remind me. Remind someone of someone or something. You remind me of my sister. You look like her. The smell of cookies baking always reminds me of my grandmother's house. Remind someone about someone or something. Please remind Joe about his doctor's appointment. He's so forgetful. Bethany reminded Lizzie about the budget meeting for the house renovation. Of or about? When we use of, we are often talking about a memory we already have. Like when I see you, I think of my sister. About is often for something we need to do. Joe has to go to his doctor's appointment. Remind someone that subject verb. Please remind Clarice that she needs to submit the form by Friday. I was feeling down, but Stan reminded me that I have to focus on positive things. Remind someone to verb. I constantly remind my students to review their vocabulary notes at the end of each day. Can you remind me to call the electrician? Bah, that was so much information. I know. Let's do a little mini review. Which word goes into which space? The first one is remember. The second one, remind. In and on can be used in so many different ways in English, but in this lesson, I want to focus on one thing because it's a mistake even some of my advanced students make. Which preposition do I need? Hmm, plus day of the week? Hmm, plus month. Right. On plus day of the week. On Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, etc. In plus month. In January, in February, in March, etc. See you on Monday. My birthday is in February. Here's a little trick. On is in the word Monday. O-N, O-N, on Monday. If you can remember the first day of the week, the rest of the days are easy. In, the word in is a perfect square, kind of like the page in a calendar. So you can think in January, in February, in March, in April, in July, in August. This is Nikki. This is also Nikki. Bring is to. Take is away. Bring is to the speaker. Everyone needs to bring one dish to my party. Jared brought a nice cheese platter. Yvonne brought a fruit salad. You can see we bring something to the speaker. The speaker is the destination. After the party. 
everyone can take some food home with them. I think someone accidentally took my jacket. Kim took Francesca home after the party. You can see we are moving away from the speaker. Who's that guy? Bring her to me. See, even with his little arms, he's trying. He's trying to show the direction himself. With you. Bring it back. We can see this man is giving something. The object is leaving the speaker. Take it with you. But bring it back. The speaker wants the object returned. Little quiz. First, ID means identification. We're talking about a card, something that has your picture, your name, your date of birth, something like that. The first one is bring, the second one is take. With bring and take, sometimes they can be used interchangeably when it's clear what we mean. For example, chef, take this dish to table number five. Chef, bring this dish to table number five. In this case, it's very clear what needs to happen. We can use take because it's going away from the speaker, but bring because you're really focusing on the customers who are going to eat. So with bring or take, it's important to follow the guidelines because then you'll always be correct. But sometimes you may hear native speakers using them interchangeably. Janice goes to work every day. She earns $40,000 a year. Janice ran in a race. She won the race. She won $500. We earn something because of our hard work. We win something because we have the most points in a competition. Let's take a look. What kind of things can we earn and win? Normally, when we think earn, we think money. For example, he earns $35 an hour. But you can also earn respect. You can earn a degree. From a university, you can earn a degree. You need to earn back my trust, and I don't know how long that's going to take. Trust. You have to earn a person's trust. All these examples tell you you worked hard for something. You deserve something. Win is more fun. You got the most points. You can win a competition. You can win money. Sometimes you're lucky, right? Like if you win the lottery. You can win a trophy. You can win a prize. Think about these questions for yourself. How much money would you like to earn? What was the last thing you won? Mini quiz. Win or earn? The first one is earn, the second one wins. It's time for a test. I'm sure you're all really excited about this. Well, I have 16 sentences. Can you choose the correct word for each sentence? There is only one correct answer per sentence. Pause the video to do this. And here are the answers. Whew. How did you do? Leave me a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. I hope this lesson helped you with these word pairs, and I can't wait to make another video for you. See you next time. Bye!